We'd like to take you to a conversation about Kenya and talk a little bit about the shining hope for communities. Joining me now is Kennedy Odede mm -hmm. and Jessica Posner Odede. It's great to have you, Karibu Ni Sana, Dugu Yangu, Dada Yangu. Tell us a little bit about Kibera and the project that you have. Okay, so, so I grew up in Kibera slums. It was a very, very hard life. Uh, at a very early age of 10, I was a street boy. So eating from the garbage. And then one day I read a book of Martin Luther King Jr. and I saw hope. So I had to change my community. So we started a school for girls and right now it's serving 300. And it happened because I was able to meet Jessica, who we also fell in love. Okay? And that's another story anyway. <laughs> we won't hear that story. Okay, yeah? Okay, so what happened now? <laughs> so we have this. Was you, were you, you came to volunteer I was in, studying in college. abroad in Kenya when I was a mm -hmm. junior in college. And you were helping at the school, or so you no, were just in Kibera in general? Uh, Kennedy had started a grassroots movement. I mean, literally, he had a job in a factory earning a dollar a day, saved 20 cents, and bought a soccer ball, and started bringing young people in the community together. So at this point, it was very grassroots, mm. sort of on the streets. And so I'm I. Sorry. There's no, <laughs> no, no money. money. <laughs> and so I ended up volunteering with Kennedy and with his organization and fell in love. Um, he came to Wesleyan, where I was at school. I helped him get a scholarship. <coughs> and then from there, we started talking about what we could do. And so we started the School for Girls together. together. Yeah. OK. That's amazing. And what kind of impact have you seen on the girls and yeah. on yeah. the community? So, yeah. what, uh, so the school was not easy to start. First of all, I got to what was called the people were, people were against it, especially men. The men were the dominant in the community. And they say there's no need of having a school for, for girls. So what we did <coughs> was that we came with the idea, how do we make it innovative? So we said that we're going to have a school for girls, but we will also help men. How? We're going to have a clinic that will help men and will help everybody else. We're going to have a library, clean water. So that's how people are willing now they to accept it. Yeah, they got buy into, you know. Yeah. And I've seen some, a lot of impact. One of it is about is the confidence in the girls at the school. They're really different. They know their rights. and in the community people see them as rude girls like, like mm -hmm. uh, what kids who are really rude because mm -hmm. for women to speak out is not allowed you know so for me i'm so happy about that another thing is now people in the community are sending their daughters to school to other schools Wonderful. they was they say i want you to be like those girls so our kid at the school have become a beacon of hope and example it's amazing it's yeah. amazing and i've spent so much time in kibera and yeah. i know how challenging it is doing yeah. something really successful Happen. like this so you guys have written a book tell us about it yeah so we wrote a book together that's coming out this fall it's called find <laughs> me unafraid mm. and it's sort of about each of our journeys um mm. through kennedy's sort of harrowing struggle and our, our life together and building the school and beyond the school, building the comprehensive services that connect to the school. So healthcare, clean water, economic empowerment programs open to the whole community. And so the book really tells our journey and the journey of the organization. A lot of, a lot of uh, women uh, will be listening to you and thinking, you know, <coughs> what is it like for a young American woman mm -hmm. living in Kibera and working there? What would you, what would you say? Because mm. they may not really have an understanding of, you know, what, what is actually, what it's actually like. You think slum, you think, forget it. I mean, I think it, it was hard. I mean, the day-to-day -day logistics, going to the bathroom, taking a shower, all incredibly difficult. But. I think what I also didn't expect was to see how resilient the people are and how people are just struggling every day to put food on their tables, to send their children to school. And I think what it made me realize was that just by luck, I had won this lottery of birth and that talent is so universal, but this opportunity that I had wasn't. And so I think that the, the circumstances are really challenging. There's no roads, no sanitation yeah. systems. Nothing, but there is an incredible human potential. What do you need the most? Yeah, so right now we need, we need, we are expanding. Yeah, so for me, Shining Up was more like a, a movement that people can change their own life. So right now in my community, we are approaching other people from another slum called Madari Slum. Mm -hmm. So we now have a school for girls there too, and we are now lacking what is called the social services around it mm -hmm. to make people buy into the school mm -hmm. more. So we are now to able to do that. So we are looking for partners. I believe mm -hmm. in partnership. Mm -hmm. And we can put our hands together 
I think we can have uh, a big impact. Yeah, our uh, hope is to yeah. build a health clinic and clean water in Mathare too, because there's That's such fantastic. a big yes. need there. There really is. So we yeah. need help to be able to do that. Mm. Um, what do you think is the one question, Jessica, that uh, a woman today, or a young girl today, should ask herself? I think that we live in such a global world and we're no longer able to just go about our lives, you know, pursue our own ambitions, our own careers without thinking about how that impacts other people. And so I think that young women today have to ask themselves, how am I contributing that my future is linked to the future of girls in Kibera, the girls at our school? What happens to them automatically impacts a young girl in America. And so thinking about how can I live a life that goes beyond me? What do you think? What, what is the key question a, a young woman should ask herself today? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm and you're the only male perspective <laughs> that we've asked. <laughs> <laughs> so for, me, okay. for me, I think the, we need to work a lot on women issues. Because as I said, that was growing up in, in Islam. It was a very hard life. And people who really suffered most in our struggle was women, were women. And I saw the women idea through my mom's eye. I, me and my mom were very close. I didn't like the way she was being beaten, she was being mistreated. So I think they allowed it to be done. I think they should not give up to fight for their rights. They should, you know, the equal right, equal pay is something that I'm really crazy about, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot to be done. And also, uh, mm -hmm. really in, in Africa and all over the world. So I think uh, women mm -hmm. should keep on pushing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to hear that mm -hmm. from, from you. Mm -hmm. And all the amazing work that you're doing. Finally, Jessica, what is the best advice you ever received? Hmm, that's a good question. I think the best advice, um, actually it's something that Kennedy's mom said to Kennedy, but that really resonated with me and that, that you sort of have to think about as you go along. Uh, Kennedy tells a story about uh, when his mother would have money to make food and all of the other kids in the community would come looking at the door wanting to eat and the immediate reaction to say like no I have to sort of protect what I have but his mother would say no we have to share that you don't have to be rich you don't have to be poor whoever you are you can make a difference and I think it's easy to feel insignificant when you're faced against such big challenges but just to keep your head down and to keep moving what about you <laughs> best advice you ever got I think uh, that is the, the same advice I got from my mother but another thing I've been really my mom told me something very special that I still admire is how to listen. Not only to listen to other people, how to listen to yourself. Mm. And I think that has been really helped me a lot. So I try to listen to myself a lot before I listen to other people. It's wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.